Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the Clarets Daily News here on Turfcast. And it's a new week, so it's a new week of Clarets Daily News. As usual, we'll be getting one out every single weekday, or at least trying our best to get one out every single weekday. You know how it is, sometimes life just gets in the way. And I want to start this week, not with some news, but just by going back on something I said a little bit last week, because I did mention on Friday show, I think it was, that I was a little bit sceptical about the design of the away shirt with it being supposedly um, a nod to the town's mining history. I think I said there is no way that anything on that shirt is anything to do with the mining history. Um, and I think I sort of like said it, they've been given a black shirt and it's more PR spin rather than the design. A couple of you in the comments were saying that were being too cynical and stuff. And someone did actually point out on Twitter a LinkedIn post from somebody who is actually a content creator at the club. He's called Sam. Um, and he just said he just spoke to somebody at the club about potentially doing a design for a shirt and then he did a mock-up and it just kind of snowballed from there and he went in on his post on LinkedIn just saying more about what is behind it and, and, and stuff like that. So it turns out quite a lot of thought I had got into it. I was never critical of the shirt. I, I do like the shirt. I think it's a great shirt. Um, but yeah, full credit to, to, to Sam who, who like, I am actually connected to it on, to him, sorry, on LinkedIn, but I didn't actually see it. So thank you um, to those of you who pointed it out for me. But yeah, turns out I was wrong. I'm more than happy to put my hands up and say I was wrong on stuff. Um, when I am, it's very rare. Um, but when I am, I'm always more than happy to do that. But yeah, quite a lot of thought did go into that shirt. And um, full credit to Sam and, and the rest of the team that, that designed the shirt. And apparently I asked the question, the little triangles on the collar, apparently that's a nod to sort of like the terraced housing in Burnley. Um, I thought it was like the collar is, um, but apparently it's terraced housing. But yeah, turns out a lot of thought did go into that. And I was wrong with what I said on Friday about there not being a lot of thought actually going into it and it being more of a PR stunt. But um, yeah, it's a nice shirt and I was glad to see that a lot of thought has gone into it. Um, elsewhere, the club played in a friendly again yesterday on Sunday against La Liga Sad Leganes. They drew nil nil. Now the club, this is official. The club have actually done a tweet about this. They've released some pictures about it, and they actually wrote an article about it on the club website. I th I'm not sure if their hand was forced a little bit. Again, this is a cynic inside me. I'm not sure if their hand was forced a little bit because. Laganas on Twitter uh, were doing live updates and everything, videos and stuff from, and they said Barnfield then, it's not called Barnfield anymore, I've been told off by, uh, by a couple of people saying that, but at Gawthorpe, um, so I'm not sure if the club did that because the opposition side just pretty much put full, not live stream, but did live updates on Twitter and things like that, so um, yeah, but it's official. The club drew nil nil against La Liga side Leganes, and it's a lot of people getting some good sets of minutes in there. Some good pictures on the website of certain players. Um, Zorora, for example, he's in there. Wilson Orderbear's in there. Lyle Foster. There's actually quite a good picture of Lyle Foster. It seems to be like he's just left the defender for dead. He's he's got the ball at his feet. You can tell he's just done a turn, and the defender's on the floor. So yeah, official from the club that Burnley drew 0-0 with Laganas at Gawthorpe on Sunday. Elsewhere, some news, well, a report that could get some fans a little bit twitchy. Now, for full transparency, before I tell you about this report, it has come from Pete O'Rourke, and as I've told you before, he's one of the main guys at Football Insider. And again, as I've told you before, Football Insider are, I wouldn't even say to be taken with a pinch of salt, just... If they've said it, it's very, very, very unlikely to happen. Um, but Pete put a report out yesterday saying that Ipswich Town are plotting a move for Burnley winger Wilson Orderbear as they look to bringing new winger. Um, and in his report, he goes on to say Ipswich Town are plotting a move for Burnley winger Wilson Orderbear. Sources have told Football Insider, by sources with Football Insider, I think they've just said they've pulled it out of a hat. Uh, the 19-year-old was one of Burnley's shining lights last season despite their relegation from the Premier League. goes on to say Ipswich are in the market for attacking reinforcements. Having missed out on Jaden Philogene, who rejoined Aston Villa, and they are now targeting a move for the French under-23 international order bear. It's been an incredibly active transfer window for the Premier League new boy so far, blah, blah, blah. Kieran McKenna and his staff are looking to build a squad capable of avoiding relegation and believe order bear could be a vital part of that. Now, look, listen, I, I have no shade towards Ipswich whatsoever. I actually don't mind them. 
but he's going to have his sights set higher, I believe, on on battling relegation again. I think I think he's he's done that obviously unsuccessfully. I do think I know a couple of people in the comments when I talk about Order Bear and how I expect him to leave, sort of like say, well, maybe not. We might keep ordering because he's he's not the finished article. He isn't, but neither is. James Trafford and he's still going to get the move people clubs like to bring in these potential stars now especially with FFP because they know that they can bring in somebody like Order or like Trafford and then sell them on for massive profit in a few years and then balancing the books I think there's there's some posts under it actually that say Ipswich would have to smash their transfer record to get him now I have no idea what Ipswich transfer record is and I have no intention of looking it up However, it's actually sparked a bit of a debate amongst Burnley fans about how much we should be looking to get for him. Some Burnley than, fans thinking above 40 million. Not for me. I, I, if, if, if Ipswich came in with 25 million quid, I know for a fact that we'd take that. Well, I say for a fact, obviously I don't. But with the way that the board has operated before, we'd sell in port for 10. Murich were reported eight. It could it was also reported to be fifteen, but I reported between eight and fifteen. I th- twenty five million, and and I wouldn't be too disheartened with that if we if we took. I think we should be trying to hold out for thirty, but above forty, I don't think we'll get anywhere near that. But yeah, uh, according to Football Insider, so pinch of salt, please. Ipswich Town are looking to bring in Burnley's Wilson Orderbear. Now, if you're the type of fan to get a little bit worried about the last report that I just mentioned about Order Bear potentially leaving, pinch of salt, please. It's Football League World. The next one might give you a little bit of hope that Sander Burge isn't leaving because according to Rudy Galletta, which I believe is an Italian journalist, yeah, an Italian journalist, he says that despite some rumours, Sander Berge is not on Galatasaray's list. However, they are monitoring other profiles to strengthen the midfield. Now, this one actually comes around six hours after he originally tweeted that Fenerbahce are looking for a new midfielder and following Mourinho's requests, targeted Sander Burge. So he's saying that Galatasaray aren't looking at him, but Fenerbahce are. Like I said, that may or may not fill you with some hope. I, with me, it does because I can't. I still just cannot see him going to Fenerbahce. I, I, I just or Galatasaray. I just cannot see him going to anyone in the Turkish league. It was actually I actually got messaged off a couple of um, I think it were Fenerbahce fans um, earlier in the week asking me how much we'd want for him and stuff. And I think I said twenty five million euros, which would be about twenty million quid. Apologies for that's off a little bit. I'm not sure the exact exchange rate at the minute. And they were just saying, yeah, there's no chance. It's far too expensive. And that's exactly... They can have interest in him all they want. And he may or may not have interest in playing under a manager such as Jose Mourinho. But there's no chance. And and again, I just going back to what I said earlier, I know the board can sometimes sell people for a little bit cheaper than we would like. But I just cannot see Sanderberg going for any less than 20 million quid. And I just don't think the Turkish League can afford him. Honestly, I don't. So I'll keep an eye on Rudy Galetti's tweets. I would suspect he's going to say in a few days that Fenerbahce um, aren't looking at him anyway. So interesting. But yeah, according to Italian journalist Rudy Galetti, um, Galatasaray, I'm trying my best not to get the two teams mixed up because I don't want any Turkish fans giving me grief, but Galatasaray are not looking at Sanderberg. However, Fenerbahce still are, but I, I just I cannot see him going to Turkey. I genuinely can't. Yeah, that's pretty much it from me today. There's not an awful lot out there. Nixon didn't actually do any articles on Burnley this Sunday. Normally he does two or three, so it's it's been a little bit of a quieter one. I've had to dig deep finding some stuff from it- uh, Italian journalists uh, normally I wouldn't even bother and again Football League World again I don't even tweet their stuff now but I will always put it in here so you guys can forge your own opinion on it but interesting just been looking on news now and there's actually a few more little bits about Sander Burge and Fenerbahce but again it's Football League World so um, I, I just cannot see I just, just very quickly read an article then on Football League World um, saying that Burnley um, are aware of Fenerbahce's interest and we're going to hold out for 20 million quid, which again is what I just said in the last one. Uh, but according to this guy on on Football League World, apparently Fenerbahce are confident that they can negotiate a lower fee. For me, if Burnley sells Sander for, say, 12 mil, I'll be absolutely disgusted. 
I genuinely cannot see us doing that though. Um, I think twenty mil has got to be the asking price for Sander, and we should not be going any lower. But yeah, that's it from me today. Um, just for full transparency, I am actually on nights this week, so I'm not a hundred percent certain how the shows are going to go. I'm going to try and do one every single day. If I have to do it before work and just schedule it for the morning or I do it when I get back I'll try my best to do one if there's no news out there on a certain day I do sometimes just just do one anyway just to keep it going but with me being on nights if for example there's no news out there on like Tuesday for example I'm not just going to force myself to do one when I get home and I'm knackered I'll probably just leave it for a day but um, yeah let me know what you think in the comments below about all of today's stuff Uh, again Fully hold my hands up and say I was wrong about the away shirt and the design. It does turn out that a lot of thought has gone into it. And full shout out to Sam for for doing a mock up and and doing something a little bit different away from his content creation that he does for the club to 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 actually get a kit out there for the club. That's fantastic. Uh, and again. I know some people are overly bothered about the friendly results, but it's good to see the club actually telling us an actual result. Again, I know some people don't really care. And I don't care about the results personally, but I do care about how the game's gone and who's played and and how we're looking as a club and stuff like that. So that's why I show interest in the friendly. It's not necessarily because of the results, but for, for other things as well. The results obviously secondary, it's just a fitness exercise. Um, but yeah, and the other stuff as well with Wilson Orderbear and Sanderberg. And hopefully, in fact, I'll definitely be back tomorrow because I'm not, I do my first night on Monday night. So I'll definitely be able to do something before Monday night. But I'll definitely be back on Tuesday morning. Uh, Fingers crossed I can get some more out this week. But thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.